What's up everybody? Today we have a new shining spotlight here today. I don't know if you guys can hear that song, but you should hear right now the song Spinning World from Naruto Shippuden ending 32. Now that's actually one of my favorite endings, but right now let's go ahead and cut into this interview. If you guys, I know I'm kind of talking over the song a little bit, but um, I'll give you a second to hear that just to make sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's get into this. All right. Oops. I apologize for this, guys. All righty. As you can see, I don't have Hobora here today to, to assist with this interview. But the show must go on. Okay, now we're finally here, and I can finally go ahead and give a formal int or, um, introduction of myself and then Diana. Or actually, Diana, go ahead and give an introduction of yourself. I'm, I'm, it's been a minute since I've done, <laughs> done an interview, so okay. I'd rather you give your introduction of yourself. That way it's a more accurate representation of yourself, and then we can get into this. Alrighty. Um, well, my name is Diana Garnett. Um, I'm here in Japan, uh, and I... I'm a professional singer, a uh, voice actress, and TV personality here. I'm probably best known for Naruto Shippuden and Number 32 Spinning World, but I've also done other anime like Naruto Mystery, and then I've also done games like Gun Vault, uh, I guess that was the anime version, um, and uh, Bomberman and a few other things. So I'm really happy to be here today, and, and I'm hoping we can have a really good like, interview -y talk thing. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, I, um, honestly, like, I don't know about anybody else, but I remember when I first heard the um, song Spinning World, like, I mean, one, I'm a big fan of Naruto, like, huge. So when I, I'm like, and I love, like, Naruto and Sasuke, like, the whole showdown that they have. And when I saw the interview and then the song, like, accompanied with it, I didn't even know that, um, I thought I thought you were Japanese, to be honest with you. When I first heard the song, and I love the song. It's, like, on probably on the, very close to the top of my list in terms of a lot of the uh, Japanese songs. You know, when it comes... I know it's weird to like your own song, but like that, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean seriously, did you like, did you write the song or did you have it? So uh, there's another singer you might know him from Naruto Shippuden opening number. I think it's three or four. Um, Joey Noe wrote my song. Yes, I don't. Um, know. Yeah, and he's I guess best known for Closer, and he also did a Gintama song. Yeah. I have to go to or something like that. Um, but um, he's he's a brilliant lyricist and well. I can compose a little bit. I'm not great at it, so I thought it was best to leave it to somebody who was really great at it. Um, and he, he came along and, and he wrote um, a bunch of songs for me specifically and sort of my, my skill set. And uh, we talked together about what kind of lyrics we would do and what kind of theme we wanted the song. So it was a really collaborative effort, but he's definitely the lyrical genius behind like a lot of the alliteration and stuff like that that goes on in the song. And okay. it's not something I would have been able to do. My lyrics tend to be really straightforward and, and not very good at being expressive. <laughs> really <blunt. laughs> yeah. It's really expressive. Like, one of the things that, um, when I, you know, when I, you know, looked into, you know, more of your process and how you do things is that I remember hearing that you actually said that it's different when you're singing a, um, Japanese song versus singing a, um, like an English-speaking song. For example, I remember you said something about the vocal cords, there being a different position that you actually um, would actually stretch your vocal cords, I believe. Am I correct? Yeah, so you use a different sort of muscle set when you when you speak and sing in Japanese than you do in English, and so um, it's it's a lot more through the nose. Like for instance, if I were to speak how I do in Japanese and English, it would sound really annoying all the time. Like I already sound pretty annoying. Like I've got a nasally voice to start with, but basically <laughs> it would sound like this because these are the the like muscles that I use, wow. and it's not the voice. <laughs> That's actually more comfortable for me now since I spend about 90% of the time in Japanese, but um, I would actually say that's closer to my natural voice, but in English it sounds really creepy, so I tend to force it down a little bit, or else people get really angry on me too. They're all like, why are you putting on a big voice? And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm a voice actress, there is no real voices. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't even know you could do that, like, just, like, go that low. Like, I don't even, I guess because I don't really understand how to use, like, the vocal cords in my throat, so, 
like how you can all I sit around and I think about how to use my voice so like that's all I do all day I'm just like what muscles do this so like for instance if you're doing accents like a British accent would come out of the back of your neck which is a weird thing to say stay with me <laughs> <laughs> it comes out of like this area and then um, American English I feel like comes out of like here um, and it's really uncomfortable for me, and it, it damages my vocal cords much quicker than anything else. So, like, when I sing Let It Go, I'm, like, struggling the whole time. It, it's in my range, but it's different muscles that I'm used to, so by the end I'm like, ugh. But I can sing, like, I don't I don't know if, you're, if, you, if you know it, but, like, Brain Powered In My Dream, which is much louder and much, much higher, and I can just keep I'm not sure if I'm familiar with that song in particular. Um, was it, like, um, no. how does it, so what? <laughs> I can't do it because it's 11 o'clock in the morning, but it's basically like, <laughs> I can't do it. But, like, Wow. Yeah, I'm like, um. <laughs> How high do you go? And I was like, well, really high. He's like, cool. <laughs> He's like, let's use that the whole time. Right? And I'm like, oh, you want to destroy my voice? So do you have have because I'm like I've, I haven't really seen too many but have you have you and Joe done like a lot of collaborations together? He was um sort of like my senior. Hey, cat, what's senior in English? Senior. Okay, uh, sorry, we don't know English. Um, <laughs> you can you can say it say it the best you can in Japanese, and I can try to understand. Senior, he's my um he, he for for a while he was sort of my all over sort of producer, songwriter, director. Okay. Exclusive! Thanks, Kat! Sorry, my roommate. <laughs> Kat, <laughs> sort of like my exclusive songwriter for a little while, because he, he, he and I were both in, in Sony, and we sort of have uh, similar aesthetics when it comes to, like, he, he was born and raised in, in L.A., and, you know, American. <laughs> and so he, he wrote some of my songs, and they fit me really well, and so we worked with him for my first two original singles, and that was... Uh, Spinning World of the Nankai Mystery, which was used for Tante uh, Tinkas Jigeno. And so he wrote, I think, five songs for me. And there's actually a couple more that may exist in the future or may not, depending on what, what happens. But but for now, there are five in those. Uh, three of them are on the, the Spinning World single, and two of them are on the Nankai Mystery single. But we worked together quite a bit. And what he liked to do was he was like, Can you rap? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, Cool, oh, you <laughs> songs. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, do you know the Fresh Prince song? I do know that song. Okay. Which one? Fresh Prince or Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Fresh Prince of Bel Air, like in West Philadelphia. Like, that's what I told everybody. That's the only song I can rap. But no, like, he asked if I could rap, and I honestly didn't know. I was like, I don't know, maybe. Like, I talk really fast, so sure, why not? And he's like, cool, I'll write you like three rap songs. <laughs> and that's why there's also rap in his Like, he can do it. And then he's like, oh, I noticed you like making funny voices all the time. Let me write a bunch of those. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Um, but so those are really fun. I really like working with Joe, and, and hopefully I can continue work, to work with him in the future. Um, although, we now have to go for a different line of contact. So. Nice. Hulk. Wow. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like, I mean, that has to be, like, very surreal. I mean, being able to work on, um, like, of course, producing songs. But not only producing songs, but, like, being able to do it for you know, like, major albums or even, like, an anime. Like, I, I have to... Before I even get into this, because this is actually what I, I wanted to start with before, but I kind of... Me messing around with the technical stuff kind of got a little jumbled around. Um, going back into your background... Um, I didn't explain that well. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. You know, I mean, I think you know, I think you explained it better than, than I, than I could have explained it. Uh, but, you know, I know you didn't just start, of course, you know, doing, like, Naruto Spinning World, which is, you know... You don't start there. <laughs> that takes a lot of like, pro like climbing and falling and climbing again. <laughs> Nobody just goes like, "Here's Naruto." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like here you go. You know, you get the you get one of the like the top animes. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, basically, my roots then. I guess. Yeah, like I mean, I know that um, you you um, grew up and you actually went to uh, then you go to school in Japan for a little bit and then eventually you actually like um, of course moved there. And you taught, uh, I'm guessing you taught English, because I know... That's okay. what everybody does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much, I mean. 
<laughs> I'm basically talking English. Um, so basically what happened was, um, I, I grew up in the 90s because I'm surprisingly ancient, and I was like, oh, the only way to get anime directly from the source is to go to Japan. Now you've got like Crunchyroll and stuff, what the heck? I came to Japan and Crunchyroll happened, and I'm like, anyway. So, so I was like, oh, I have to go to Japan in order to fully experience like my like love of anime and so like I spent the entirety of my childhood being like okay I'm gonna study abroad and then I'm gonna study abroad again and then I'm gonna go to Japan as anything I can and then from there I'm gonna see an anime song somehow magically and my dad was like yeah you do that <laughs> because my dad he he definitely is supportive but I don't really think anyone thought it was gonna happen <laughs> so, they were like they, they don't want to actually like they don't want to discourage you but they're just like okay you know we'll see yeah, my, my parents are great. They're like, you can do it. <laughs> but he, he, of course, like, if, if I had anything specific, like, I want to study abroad in Japan, he would be like, cool, work a lot of summer jobs and help pay for it, and then we'll, we'll consider it. Because, like, I had to show my own sort of determination. And also, it's expensive. So, <laughs> lots of loans and grants and scholarships. Oh, uh, don't even get me like, started on that. <laughs> my dad was basically all like, if you apply for things and if, if you make it happen to your best ability, I will do whatever I can to help. This is great. And also because it's his fault, because dad likes him. So he was like, That's gotta be awesome. <laughs> He's like, what, you wanna go to Japan? What? I'm like, we've been watching anime since I was born. So, anyway, um, and so at 16, I found a study abroad online called ASPIE. I called it ASPIE. <laughs> um, they were a pretty good program, and I ended up going to the middle of nowhere, and I went to high school for a year in the middle of nowhere. It was like a Disney show. Oh, what's, what city? And what prefecture? It was Kochi. City in Kochi Prefecture, and then halfway through, I went to Tokushima in Tokushima Prefecture. What's the nearest? <laughs> what's the nearest big city by there? Those are the nearest big cities. Um, oh, wow. Shikoku, those are the biggest cities. Wait, so which which is it? Is it in? Is it on the island of Honshu, or is it like some? It's, it's the tiny oh, Shikoku. Oh, okay. Oh, I know like nothing about Shikoku. It's where Sakamoto Yoshino is from. Yeah, the Abraham Lincoln. He's from there. So. Oh wow. So I went there. Um, it's also known as the Tosa region. Uh, those really ugly, wrinkly dogs come from there. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, those particular yeah. dogs. I live there. It's like the West Virginia. Like, sorry, people from West Virginia. I lived near West Virginia, so I get to say this. It's the West Virginia of Japan. There's, like, lots of cities around it, but there's nothing in it except for, like, a lot of nature, and it's gorgeous. Super gorgeous. And then there's also, like, maybe mountain villages. Like, there was a lot of, like, villages with, like, three houses and it's nestled between a bunch of mountains. <laughs> So was there like a lot to do around there then? Like, oh, there's nothing to do. What I did for fun in in the high school when I was in Japan is I would take my mama chali, my bike, to the nearest logging mountain. They they logged for bamboo, and I would just hang out there. <laughs> like I would just be like mm, bamboo. Like that was the most fun I could have. <laughs> I don't know, but I still feel like even though like Japan does have, you know, of course, you know, like like in any country, every place is not going to be like like extravagant or like have you know a whole lot to do but I feel like the nature in Japan is like very beautiful like it's very scenic like anywhere you go so many flowers I think I filled my camera with flower pictures and then pachinko signs because I had never come across pachinko before and I'm like this is hilarious um, <laughs> I, I definitely wandered around the mountains a lot I became like a mountain person and there's a castle so I would sit and look at the castle and pretend I was a samurai so that like <laughs> I had a lot of chin like <laughs> But, but that was my high school experience, and then in university, I went to uh, Hyogo Kenichi Daigaku in Kobe for about a year, and then I spent another about half a year between Kyoto and Tamagawa Daigaku. So, um, like, I, I spent a good half of my university in Japan, because basically the only reason I went to university was because my dad was all like, you should go to university, or I won't support you. <laughs> dream. Like, because he was all like, you know what's not, like, a very stable career? Have a Being backup. Closer. So you should definitely get a degree. And I was like, okay. And like my plan included getting a degree anyway so that I could teach English in Japan as a fallback. Because I was like, oh, this is fallback, I'll teach English. <laughs> so, so I went to, I, I got a bunch of scholarships and I went to a university that allowed me to study abroad in Japan for really most of my schooling. I was I, I was able to graduate quickly as well because um, I had a lot of credits for making and stuff like that. Basically, my goal was to get to Japan as fast as possible in the safest way possible. Um, and so I, I like initially came to Japan on a... A teaching visa, uh, which is the easiest way for a native English speaker to get to Japan. Because basically, if you graduate from a four-year institution and you speak English, they hire you. So 
like, yay. And so I ended up first in Nagoya, and then I was like, music doesn't happen here, so I moved to Tokyo. It was right after the earthquake, so a lot of positions opened up, sadly, but also useful for me. Um, and so I came up to Tokyo after basically everybody left, and I became a teacher for junior high school students in Nerima, which you might know from Tokyo Ghoul or Yep, Ashiga. of course. <laughs> So Your Lie in April actually takes place at the, the station that I was uh, teaching, and so does uh, Tokyo Ghoul. They never actually mention it, but if you look uh, in the, the final battle scene, you can see signs for uh, Seiburi Kebukuro Line and an Oedo Line, and the only place they meet is the station. <laughs> so, sorry, I like trains, too. Um, and then also <laughs> a couple other things, uh, like uh, Touch author. Uh, ah, I can't remember. Ah. Oh, well, uh, he wrote Cross Game and stuff like that. I'm really bad at names, by the way. Uh, he also was <laughs> Takahashi Rumiko, so Ran was supposed to take place in Nerima as well. So all of those things take place in Nerima, so I was like, cool, I'll live here, guys. <laughs> you know, I feel like Ranma, when you mentioned Ranma, I mean, you know, um, I know this is very random, but, like, I've never actually watched Ranma, and I know it's made by, like, the same person who made uh, Inuyasha, of course, you know, and I mean, I love, uh, I, mean, I love Inuyasha, um, which, by the way, I mean, this is this is also random, but... I love that uh, Fukai Mori uh, cover, like straight up. Oh, like, yeah, did I do that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was surprised. Like, I was like, "Wow, you done like a lot of covers, you know?" For um, two hundred, weren't there? Like, basically, we were uploading one a day, and then I was like, "I can't do this. I will break." And so we started doing one a week. But then Tokyo Takumo just like filed for bankruptcy or something. So, oopsies. So I guess I'll just do them on my own. But yeah, no, I think I did do that song. You read. Right. I was gonna do it as a duet, but I think my friend ran. Yeah. She was like, no, that is annoying. So. Yeah, like I mean, I'm. You know, I'm like, <laughs> it's funny. I was like wondering if you had done maybe like the uh, Yu Yu Haka show, uh, like first ending, because I was actually gonna say I was like, you should do that. And then I like look it up. I'm like, oh, I guess you did. I'm like, you, you covered well, like first ending. That's that. Um, ba da 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 da. Um, I didn't do that one. I should. <sighs> I did the <laughs> opening, and then I did the fourth ending, I think, Daydream Generation. I, oh, yeah, um, Daydream. Yeah, Daydream, it, which is my yeah, favorite. No, oh, yeah, the... Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that one. Yeah, that one was good. Yeah, I did that one. Um, I think I think I just killed some people with my voice just a moment. <laughs> but, you're probably, like, slightly younger than me, so I think Inuyasha was sort of your gateway to Takahashi no Miko, but... Yeah. yeah. So Ranma was definitely my first con. I actually started doing karate because I was watching Ranma. Wow. And I was like, too bouncy, pick ballet or karate. And I was like, I don't know any ballet anime. At the time, Princess Tutu wasn't at hand. Now it is. So I was like, so I'm going to pick karate and do one. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, like, I, don't, I mean, I did martial arts as well um, growing up. Actually, I would say that's probably... Um, I mean, my, my dad wasn't into, like, anime, so I guess he wasn't cool in that aspect. Um, but he was uh, definitely into, like, martial arts and Asian culture. And I'm like, that coupled with the fact that, what, like, when I was growing up, like, that was when Dragon Ball Z first came out. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, what is all this? And then, you know, of course, Inuyasha later, and then, you know, just from there. But, yeah. I mean, what I studied had nothing to do with Japan. It was uh, Tansudo, which you can find Oh, Korean. Right? Yeah. Not Taekwondo, but Taekwondo, and that's very specifically mid-Atlantic, like, I don't know why. Um, but I ended up really liking it. We It was called karate, but we also did weapony things, and I like weapony things. So worked out. <laughs> did you keep up but with I, it? Um, kind of. I mean, I was able to use it for work recently. I did a stage play with Tanaka Mayumi, who did, like, Luffy's voice and Krillin from Dragon Ball. Um, and, wow. Uh, yeah, she does leave these voices ongoing. Um, and uh, I was able to, to be in a play with her, and there was an action scene, and so myself and two other people were doing a bunch of, like, action-y, super awesome karate things, so I got to use it finally. <laughs> Ten years later. Well, no, I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing, and you got to meet, like, wow, like, the, the you know, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I forget. I always forget, forget the name of Luffy's voice actor. I always know about, like, of course, uh, when I think of, like, the, uh, uh, the Japanese voice actors, uh, Masako uh, Nozawa, you know, where she, wait, what, what was that? Just a second. I just saw, I just saw you left something. What was that? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. She's wonderful and I love her. <laughs> <laughs> I had her son. How, how was that actually meeting her? Um, surreal. She's A, super nice, and B, she's such a good mom. Like, she's got a, a son about my age, 
and uh, they they live together because she's a little bit older, and so uh, it's better for her to live with with someone. And her son's about to get married, and so they're preparing for that. And uh, like it's just it's she's such a good mom. She brought socks for all of the people in the play. She was like, I got socks. Would anybody <laughs> like socks? And I was like, I love you. <laughs> delicious snacks that you know, but, she didn't make it herself but, but why socks know. was there like lots of socks <laughs> she was all like i got lots of socks i only wear like the little toe socks with the, all the separate toes and she's like so i'm not going to use these but i keep getting them from people so i would like to share my socks with you and i was like oh sure <laughs> <laughs> and then she would also bring delicious food she's like oh i've known this like restaurant for like 30 years i'll bring you like a bento or something she's so nice so does she give and you I, that too like the, the the pillow you have i'm sorry does she give you the pillow I, that you have right there I, no this was from a, a convenience store uh Kuji are like uh, the lotteries. Yeah. And, this is and it's a pillow, and if you open it up, I love this. This is my charger. <laughs> if you open it up, it's it's the really amazing scene. Oh, I can open. Oh, oh wow. I know. And it's a pillow. <laughs> I never saw anything like that while I was there. Like I've never seen anything like that. I got one, and I'm looking frantically for it. So like. They had a one piece one and an Utterzo one, and I will die if I don't get my hand with an Utterzo one. But but yeah, so but they don't sell them anymore, so I have to find it like recycled, which is fine with me. I will do that. I don't care if somebody else hugged it first. <laughs> oh man, like so. I wanted to also ask you too about the show that you were actually on, and that's what I feel like. What's that's what really got you to get your start? I mean, I could be wrong, but. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> um, if we're no, about no, no, Gmon or Gmon. Yeah, no, to Gmon the world. Yes, so exactly. No, Gmon means post. Some post in about throat. The world is what that means. Um, so yeah, that that is. I was about Seikai was the world, or Seikai isn't Seikai world. It is, but they they decided to be fancy and use half of it in English, so it's no to Gmon the world. They're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys. I was still teaching at that point, so I was like, good job. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, I initially went on, uh, like, I had a college band that I still performed with, but basically I was a complete amateur when I first went on the show. And a lot of the people on the show are professional singers. Um, I would say most of the original cast of the show were already professionals in, in Japan. Um, and a lot of, you know, professionals don't have labels. They, they do freelance things or they do, like, wedding singer stuff. And those definitely professionals, though, that's how they make they're living and uh, I was one of the first people on the show that was one of like the internet like I just auditioned um, yeah. with my YouTube at the time um, and they were like we can't see your face because all this is is anime pictures I'm like you right so <laughs> <laughs> so, so I had to be in something and I was like er, you're awful with my face um, but, but yeah no like I had basically only performed a lot a handful of bands and I hadn't done any professional work yet except for like a couple indies sort of cover tracks uh Hardcore is a, a disco work in this thing. Anyway, um, but uh, I, I went on the show the first time and I sang So Bakasu for Money Tension and um, Samurai X, I guess it's called. And uh, it ended up being kind of a popular sort of thing. Like it trended, I guess, on. I'm not very good at internet, so <laughs> it trended. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, and, um, so yeah, I've seen I've seen some songs like from that show like trend on there. Like I remember one time I saw um, it was like a choir and they were singing I believe like the Evangelion yeah. song. I don't know if you know uh, if you're familiar what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. That's the Glory Gospel Singers. I believe they're based in New York. They're fantastic. Definitely yeah. higher than during the Japan Day events. Uh, one of the girls in the the Gospels are really big Ghibli fans specifically. She's really nice. Um, Angel, I believe. Oh, so you've yeah, actually Angel. met them before. Oh, we all know each other. Everybody that's ever been on the show, we all know. Each other. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. like there's a few people that aren't friendly, but <laughs> that we've all we're all pretty close. Like, yeah, but they're everybody likes the same stuff, so we become like, we all basically everybody likes anime. But the show tries to pretend that we're not all just anime fans. Like initially with me, they're like, I like J-pop, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like sure. They try to play it off. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but like you know, not everybody, of course. Like you know, some people particularly like anime. Um, but but everybody likes Japanese music, which is why we're there. So um, and and so the show calls they 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 cast people like that are in Japan as professional singers. They also cast people outside of Japan that are professional singers or or idols. 
And then they also have an open call, and I entered that open call, was on the show. Uh, it ended up printing, uh, and then they invited me back a couple times. And uh, the third or fourth time, I guess, I think it was the third time I was on the show, I ended up winning, um, which was great. And then uh, it just so happened that somebody in Sony was watching it with their son, and their son really, really liked me and was like, Dad, you got to hire <laughs> <laughs> and then that like, was it. You know to their seven-year-old son, right? Yeah, I'm popular with seven-year-old boys specifically. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I haven't been able to catch too much of um, your performances on there, like, but I know I saw one, and I really loved it, where you did Ikimono Gakari's um, Bluebird. That was not that show. That yes. really wasn't really. It looks like almost the same. Yeah, I know, right? The well, most recent time I was on the show, I sang a slam dunk song, um, and that you cannot find that. <laughs> like, it's really hard to find. So the what show, show was, was that? Like, that you did the, uh... That was, um, karaoke battle. Za karaoke battle. Uh, and that's on a different network entirely. That's on Tereto, which is the So that's not network. on NHK? No, none of these are NHK. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, so my roommate also just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Japan has about seven channels, so it's pretty, like, we've got NHK, NHK Itere, and then we've got, like, uh, Nite, which is the show Notre Dame on the World on, and that has, like, Detective Conan, that's about it, yeah, and uh, that kind of thing. And then, uh, I think it also has any scenario that's totally... Well, TV TV Tokyo. All of the jump stuff, like One Piece and Naruto, and that's what Karaoke Battle is on. And then uh, I'm also commonly on Fuji Television. They have a lot of monomane. They don't have a lot of anime, except for they've got Noitama, which is a Monday night anime slot, and they've got kind of really artsy anime. Feels that, and it's my dream one day to sing for But, yeah, Television Tokyo has always been really solid to me. That and NHK, of course. My, my regular shows have all been NHK. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like, confused with the, like, the, uh, like, which show it was. I mean, because I, I swear that it looked like with, um, so then maybe it wasn't the one that I, the, the, uh, choir, what was the name of the choir again? Blurry Gospel was on Noto Jumon. That's Noto Jumon. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, yeah. And I, but I'm trying to think of that, that they were the ones that sung on, like, or when I heard them sing, like, the Evangelion song, if that was actually on the show then. That was Nota Jumon for sure. Like, Nota Jumon, okay. um, the difference between the two is Nota Jumon, it's as, it, it's supposed to be, like, just as well as you can sing. Okay. Um, so you can have a lot of arrangements. They often have groups. I'm one of the few people they've never put in a group, and I want to, I want to sing with my friends. It reminds <laughs> me of the Apollo, for some reason. I said from, you know, what I read about, like, how it works, it kind of reminds me slightly, like, the, of the, of a nicer version of the Apollo, a little bit. Pretty much, yeah, it's basically like, the same. Like the Japanese version of the Apollo. <laughs> the, the karaoke battle is a different show. Basically, the karaoke machine judges your score. So you have to sing to the machine, not sing the best you can sing. It's two different things. And that is, it's, it's kind of like a game. So I enjoy, I've only been on the show once, but it's fun because it's like a game. I try and get a high score. Um, without sacrificing like, the quality of my singing, because singing to the, the karaoke machine, honestly, you have to sacrifice the quality of your singing. You can't do techniques, you can't do vibrato, you can't arrange it, you have to sing it exactly how it's written. That's fun in like a challenging game kind of way, but it's also frustrating in a singer kind of way, because I can't fo- like fully express myself. So yeah, you can't that. put your own spin on it. do whatever I want, except that they usually pick the songs for me, but other than that, I can do whatever I want. They give me a song, and I'm like, yes, I can sing that. Although sometimes I say no. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I don't want to sing that. But like this last time I was on the show, I sung uh, Amuro Nami's Hero, which is a fairly recent song. And then uh, Oguro Maki's uh, Anata Naki Mitsumetaru, which was from Slam Dunk. I picked Oguro Maki, and they picked Hero. And I was fine with Hero, but it's not my genre. Like uh, She's very much soul and R&B, and that's not my best genre. Um, but I am very good at anime songs, so I was like, okay, as long as I get to sing the anime song second, we're good. So, like, so we, we compromise <laughs> on that. Like, if, if I only sing what I want to sing, I think uh, I would end up alienating a lot of the audience because a lot of them don't know anime songs, and that's fine. But that is, um, but they always have me sing alone, I think, because I've got sort of that, as, as somebody that's debuted in, inside Japan and has had recent releases in Japan, um, I think they, they sort of set me up as like the, the final like last boss, which is great. I like that. That's good. <laughs> final boss, finish him. I don't know. I always think of that when like Mortal Kombat, but yeah. Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> but um, so I, w- I also wanted to know too, like when you did actually like when Sony actually decided to pick you up and they signed yeah. you. 
Yeah. How long? Yeah. Say what? They contacted the show to get a hold of me since I was teaching at the time. So, um, and they, they um, SMA, Sony Music Artists, represented me. And then they looked inside Sony to find a label that would sort of distribute me. And so I was with SMA for agency, and then my label was SMA. Also, you also you actually moved to a different, a couple different labels actually. I've only been through one label so far, um, but uh, we're actually like honestly, Japan isn't doing well music industry wise. Like, don't want to be dark here, but music is not selling because people have figured out YouTube. Oh no! So basically, what happened was Japan never had that digital bridge. They never had like iTunes or. Like, they, they had things available, but everything was always physical CD-driven. 70% of the Japanese music market is still physical sales, which is not <laughs> sustainable in this market. Yeah, I, I noticed that, like, um, when I was in Tokyo, like, seeing, like, stores that had, like, CDs. I mean, part of me, I don't know, <laughs> likes the fact it's a little, like, nostalgic to be able to, like, walk into a CD store. And you're, you're like, I, mean, I like physical stuff a little bit, but, I mean, it doesn't, I know a lot of people it doesn't work with today. It doesn't work because the thing is, is, if somebody's like, oh, what was that song? What they're going to do is they're going to YouTube it, and then they're going to listen to half of it, and then they're going to be like, I'm good now. So now it's not even streaming services because they're not doing all that well in Japan either. Um, it's it's not streaming services. It's the fact that everybody has a tiny computer in their pocket. They're all like, oh, I'm just going to look up whatever song I want to listen to. And so labels are struggling quite a bit with like how do we make our content accessible without losing money. So, like, for instance, um, the entire PV for Spinning World is available in Japan, on YouTube, but not outside of Japan. But that's actually not a very good way of doing things, because outside of Japan, it's hard to get my CDs anyway. So, like... Yeah, um, like, I got, I got, I mean, being a big fan of it. Yeah. It's, it, it actually is really frustrating, because the illegal upload of Spinning World, uh, before it got taken down, had seven and a half million hits. And I was like, look, labels! <laughs> and they were like, hmm, but they're not sales. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not my fault! <laughs> anyway, it sold okay, but because uh, the streaming, basically 2012 was the, the beginning of the crash, and 2015, basically everyone has a smartphone, and my songs came out in 2015, and there was like a big drop in, in physical sales. Even people like Utada Hikaru used to sell 6 million units, and now she's like selling about 600,000, and that that's only a fraction of what she used to sell, and she's still the same place on the charts, it's still number one on the charts, but basically we've lost like over two-thirds of the industry and so artists that normally would have um, been breaking even are now losing money just by putting out music through a label but if you do things indies you don't lose money for anybody which is great so basically this is a business it's not just about like yay singing songs I wish it was that would be so much better but um, it is a business and the labels have to think about um, like how much money they put into promotion or uh, production versus how much they're going to get out. And I'm a long-selling artist. What I do is I, I basically have stable sales for a very long time, but I'm not like a, an artist that has an immediate hit. So, uh, and that's honestly there aren't any new artists because with with the current market you can't break out. There is no sort of period of moving up. And so I did a cover album that did well, and then after the cover album I did an original and that did fine, but not amazingly well, and then my second original was for a kid's show no one ever heard about, so it didn't do particularly well, and so the label sort of looked at that and they're like, I think you would be more suited for doing more TV content and then music uh, when it's available, and I'm like, that makes sense, actually. But I mean, I think um, that's good if you're like more stable as opposed to like, you don't want to be like a one-hit wonder type of thing, like you put a just, once... And that's something I was afraid of, because if you look at the other foreign artists, there aren't that many. There's like three. But if you look at the other foreign artists, you've got a lot of one-hit wonders, and then you've got a lot of people that are initially popular and then sort of slowly fizzle. Um, so a, a good example of a one-hit wonder would be Jero. He had one song. And that's just three or four, a little bit, but he wasn't able to sort of compound on it. And then you've got people like Chris that did really well um, but never had anything anybody would consider a hit up until he retired and then suddenly he has a hit. I'm like, what? He's all like, what? We're both like, what? Because, like, it's a great song, and it came out four years ago, and now it's a hit. And it's like, what? Yeah, I guess, like, when you mention, like, Utagi Carl, she's, like, that one, like, foreign artist, if you think about it, that's actually, like, kept, you know, like, actually, like, really, like, broken into Japan. I mean, I guess, you know... Utagi Hikaru? Yeah, she, she's, she, she's actually from the U.S. No, she's not. 
I swear she is. I know. I've, I've, I've like looked up everything about. She's not from the U.S. She is Japanese. Really. <laughs> That is a Japanese person. Uh, her mom is a rather famous Japanese idol. Or uh, was. Really? I don't know. I'm almost willing to like bet on this because I like I know like I like with Utada Hikaru like for like years. Born in the U.S., but she was. She's not. She's very Japanese. She's so does she live in the U.S. longer than you know like then? Because I'm like. Wait, she lived in the U.S. off and on because I believe her, her parents also lived in the U.S. off and on, but like. Her kokseki, her, her nationality is Japanese, like, uh, passport-wise. She's okay. Japanese person. So oh. she's not, she's not, foreigners have to go through things like visas and stuff. Utara Hikaru may, may have been born in the U.S., but she definitely was primarily in Japan in her teens. And she debuted at, a, I believe it was 13, um, and then she worked in Japan, and then uh, she was way too famous and couldn't be comfortable in Japan, and I believe for university, she moved back to uh, Boston, I think it was, but she's now back in Japan. She's Japanese. She's a Japanese person. Wow, okay, <laughs> well, you, you've, you've enlightened me today, then, because, like, this whole time, like, I've always thought, like, you know, because, I mean, I used to, like, like when I was, like, a little kid, like, have a little crush on, uh, like, Utada Hikaru, I'm like, oh, man, you know, and, like, you know, I, I, I swear to you, I thought she was, but, I mean, you know, that makes more sense if she maybe, like, stayed born in Japan or whatever, but I, I think that she was at least born in New York. I'm almost I'm almost curious. She okay. She may have been born in the U.S., but she was primarily raised in Japan. Um, and her parents are both Japanese, and she married a Japanese guy. Initially, even, they're broken up now. Like, they're super broken up now. Um, but, no, no, the Kiki Tarihikaru is very Japanese. There are a few more famous foreigners. Agnes Chan, she's, I believe, either Hong Kong or Taiwan, I don't remember which, but she was big in the 70s, um, and uh, she stayed in Japan uh, mostly. And there's a few strike like other Taiwanese or Hong Kong uh, artists here and there, but uh, there aren't really too many Americans. There's Chris Hart, there's myself. You can count Joe, because he was born and raised in the U.S. And then, um, I mean, he's, you know, also Japanese, but he was born and raised in the U.S., so he's both. <laughs> um, let's see. That, that's about it. Yeah, I, I guess there's Akino. She's sort of similar to Joe. She's uh, she did like the Aquarian song that's really famous in Japan, but it's it anyway. Um, but she was also uh, I think born and partially raised in the U.S. but came to Japan with her siblings and her teens. They're super Mormon, so they do Christian rock in Japan. Oh wow! <laughs> no. But they have also done some anime stuff as well. Oh, they're they're interesting because they have sort of like an acapella feel. I really like that. But like, yeah, there's a, there's a couple people that have Japanese nationality but were raised abroad. And then as far as like actually totally foreign, there's like three of us that had gone through major. <laughs> okay, well, what about like? I mean, even though this isn't like one particular singer, what about like? Uh, it's like a actually a band, uh, Monkey Magic. Are you familiar with Monkey Magic? Yeah. I like them. They're great. There's like uh, what two Canadians in there? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, like that's that 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 one. That's what I always think of when I think of a um, Japanese. That's a good person because also Jamil, he did like a fairy tale song. Um, and I don't think he's still active. Um, and then there's Himika. She's Canadian as well. There's a lot of Canadians because they got that that working holiday visa. Mm, I want one. Americans can't get that. Uh, working holiday, you can go to Japan for a year and do whatever. So that's nice because you don't have to worry about visa restrictions. One thing that Americans have to worry about quite a bit is uh. We can only work within our visa. So when I was teaching, I wasn't allowed to make money off of music. I had to make a very clean break from teaching to music visa. But if you don't already have a career in music, you can't get the music. Wait, visa. so it has to so be very specific when you make it when you actually get like a long term visa. Like you can't uh, like so you can't just say like, hey, I'm working. You know, <laughs> like I just like. You have to work in a particular field, and your your visa is specific to your field. And there's even two different kinds of teaching visas. There's the specialty in humanities, in which you can do like. A Kaiwa, and then there's the um, sort of teaching in public schools visa. So like that's I had sort of like a permit to do both, but neither of them are education. Although with the specialty in humanities, you can do English entertainment as education. So stuff like Kisuego, which is something I still do now, um, or like Benesse material, like educational materials, that kind of thing in English. That's fine. But I was working primarily in Japanese. I did do some English education stuff, like at, you know, Kisuego and stuff like that at the beginning of my career as well. Just sort of slid on that for a little while because you don't already have 
like an entertainment career intact, you can't get the entertainment visa, but then how do you get the entertainment visa? Because you're not allowed to do entertainment on not that visa. So it's really, honestly, it's set up so that you can't get it. <laughs> we don't want to give it to you. Basically, it was originally set up to bring American and, and other artists to Japan for short periods of time for tours and stuff like that. It's not made for people that live here long term to do entertainment. And there aren't too many people with the visa. I think it's probably, it would number no larger than about 300 people in all of Japan have this visa. And I would guesstimate less. Like, it's hard to estimate, but basically, I don't know anyone else on this visa. So it, I can't ask for advice. Um, so it's very difficult. <laughs> it's like the rare. The... And it's in the entertainment industry, but everybody's married. Everyone. So <laughs> you don't have to care. So nobody's on my visa. As far as I know, like, I would guesstimate, I, I, I would guesstimate probably 100-ish people are on this visa, but no more than 300. Wow, people. I mean, you're you're really, I mean, I would say blessed, you know, to be able to, to actually get something like that. Wow, I mean, you know, good job. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I like punishment. <laughs> there you go. Kidding. But it is, <laughs> it's hard to sustain because you need to have long-term contracts. Which is why when I was talking, like when, when Sony and I were, were sort of talking future things over, they were like, oh, music is kind of difficult to sustain constantly. Because even major artists will have like um, a release and then nothing for like a while. And then like another release. Like even if Taru Shikaru like, has years in between releases sometimes. Because she's like, mm -hmm. um, and And so generally, especially in Sony's case, there's usually like a two year break between everything. And that's really difficult for my visas to sustain. So I had sort of sustained it before by doing collaborations with like amazing artists like Flo or Doji. Yeah, Chief. I was gonna ask you about that with Flo. Like, you, I know that had to be amazing. I'm sorry because, like, my fa I would say probably my all-time favorite Japanese song is "Colors." I don't know if you know <gasps> that song, like yes, Kogias. Yes. Like you know. Yes. Like, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. I love that song. Yeah, no, I definitely that was one of that was definitely one of the acapellas I did. I also really like Days from Eureka Seven. That was like yeah, I really no, liked no. all the stuff they did first, but um, like Taka's guitar is really good. <laughs> so, like I was like, oh. now um, not, yeah. not not to not to cut you short. I know that in the next like um, like I would say like. 10 minutes you know we do have to wrap up um okay but um definitely continue what you're saying but i just wanted to you know let everybody else know and let you know as well you know that way we wouldn't call anybody by surprise yeah no i gotta i gotta wrap up my talk because right now it's all like and uh sony and i are no longer together but it's difficult to like wrap it up but basically sony and i are still in incredibly good terms they still throw me work but they they thought that i wouldn't be able to stay in just singing long term and I'm very good at TV presenting as well so I'm currently doing a couple regular uh, presenting jobs I'm doing Eagle Focus which is about the game of Go for people that like Shikaru no Go <laughs> um, and then uh, I also do Kisuego and that's basically that, that runs every day on the radio and then I'm also it's about to be announced but I can probably already talk about it on Fuji I'll be doing another radio show that I'm hosting with, with another singer and it'll be talking about Japanese culture and uh Music, I guess. I don't know. We're both singers. The history so of, behind the music, Japanese version. We're talking about shrines, specifically. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're talking about shrines, and then also music. I don't know. It nothing to do with the history of music. Nothing. Just the history of shrines. No. He really likes shrines. So. And I, I like everything, so I'm fine. But we're doing that, and with that, I will be singing the ending song to that show. So I got new, new songs coming out, and I'm writing them myself this time. So we'll see how that goes. I did just say that like my, my own songs are like awkwardly straightforward. So we'll see how that is. Um, and I've also got, uh, can't talk about it in too much depth, but I've got a song for a game coming out right oh, around wow. Anime Expo. And I will be, it won't be available for purchase, but you can listen to it in the game. So it'll be... Uh, so will you be at Anime Expo? That. Yep, yep. Oh wow, okay. Okay, I'm... I'll probably tell you the name of the game, except that like it was a long and something about dragons. <laughs> so, <laughs> well I don't I don't want I don't want you to like get in trouble or anything like that. So it's fine. The song's coming out in like two weeks. Okay. We're, we're well in our, our, our way. Um but anime expo look for, for things about dragons, uh, and it will be there. 
And then, yeah, so basically I have three songs coming out at once. Uh, I don't know much about one of the songs. It may or may not be exciting. I'm not sure. <laughs> and then radio and then game. And those are all coming out this summer. So that's exciting. Yay! Surprise! It's fun. Um, and then uh, the radio show and, and that kind of thing. So basically I'm, my, my career is stable because I'm doing these long-term things. And because I've got that long-term thing to sort of bolster my, my visa, I'm able to do music when music opportunities arise and we'll be distributing through various sources um maybe sony in the future but also we'll be distributing indies some of them won't be available for purchase they'll just be in game that kind of thing and hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of those so i'm hoping for more here so. wow like so like with so have you done like this was that the first time you've ever done like a major like video game project no like, i did like, gunvolt actually the same company did gunvolt uh about last year i did like the uh but it's the first time I did song for a game. I've okay. done a lot of voiceover for games. Um, most of them are uncredited because they don't tend to credit the, the sort of English voices. That but uh, the gun, it was Yale did the main characters. The, the, two, the, the girl that has two girls in the did that. Um, and then they called me back for this game uh, as the, the singer. And then I've also done like Bomberman and Magnet of Shigi no Shoujo and that kind of thing. So. But it's the first time I've done a song for a game. So if you've done, so okay, you do some voice act or voice acting work then. Yes. So is your goal to eventually be able to voice like an original character, like to be able to actually like do like a like a huge role, like kind of like uh, like like uh, Masako Nozawa, how she does like Goku? Do you want to be able to do like something like that? It would be really cool. Like I mean, definitely when I started sort of aiming to be a singer. It was in tandem with also wanting to do voice acting. Um, my, my favorite, of course, because 90s is Hayashi Bara Megumi. So basically, I kind of wanted to be like that. But as I've sort of become an adult, I've realized that as a foreigner, I will never be the top choice for a non-foreign role. <laughs> and that's okay. So what I want to do is, is sort of sneak my way in by doing foreigner roles or, you know, half kids or, you know, roles of... Uh, characters that have come from abroad somehow or aliens something like that because I don't believe it's sort of I, of course I, I hope in the future that that foreigners will be able to get regular Japanese and anime roles but at the moment I don't think that's where the industry is you know mentally. this is actually a good this is actually something I, I, I really didn't mean to ask you would you yeah. ever be interested in doing work for like for example like original like animes like let's say like you know how like there's netflix animes that or netflix is picking up a lot of shows right now like it's yeah. or do you remember like at it like youtube as well and also amazon fire and Hulu and stuff like that yeah. and i'm like sitting there like i want to do that <laughs> but but i guess that should be a little bit more clear like for example like do you remember like avatar have you ever seen avatar last airbender yeah have i seen it <laughs> hey i have to ask like i mean I, believe it or not i know some people who have it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like, would you ever want to like do like a project that that's like in an anime esque style, but maybe it's in in English? With I know that's a little bit different than what outside of what you do, but like, because I know you typically do it in Japanese. But yeah, honestly speaking, like, I really kind of also want to be on the production side of things as well, because I think that animation and art in general is very fluid, and if we don't influence each other, I don't really see the point of having cross communication so like why not like let's all jumble together like uh, even um marvelous ladybug is between toei animation studios and um animation studio in france and avatar is, is a really high quality anime inspired american animation and i absolutely love it and that that kind of thing is definitely something i'm, I'm interested in because with my skill set and with my my knowledge of how things work here be like I'd be good on that team, and then I could also do the music. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have like a favorite animation studio that you would prefer to to be with? Like, I know this is even though I'm talking a little bit from a different perspective. Um, you know, as someone who creates my own content, like I always say, like, oh, it'd be so amazing to like have something with Madhouse, for example. I don't know if you know Madhouse Studios. I would say Mappa, which is Ma Madhouse's like bastard brother. Yeah. <laughs> It's the same. Uh, Maruyama-san is the, the guy that uh, made both M3 and Mappa. And Mappa just does really artistic stuff. You might know him from Yuri on Ice, um, Shio and Tora. It's all good stuff. And it's all really high quality. Basically, Madhouse, when they started losing their quality, 
everybody was like it and went to Mappa. And then now they've got M3 as well, and they do a little bit more ex experimental stuff, and, and they do a lot of, like, like Yuri and I had very experimental animation. Um, that, 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 those are the type of studios I'd like to work with. Um, of course, I love production ID for high key reasons. Oh, yeah. And I love, like, you know. How you feel about mm -hmm. Sunrise? Oh, I like Sunrise. They do a lot of really cool robot stuff. Oh, yeah, they're all mech. <laughs> I'm a bit, I'm, I'm big in the mech a little bit, so I mean Gundam, and then you know of course I mentioned like Hogi asked you, so you know I'm like. <laughs> I want to be Ivan, like, literally be Ivan. It's my goal in life. Yeah, no, I, I do really <laughs> like the ones. Um, they they often work with uh sort of smaller uh, music labels as well, so it's not impossible that I could maybe think about doing some of that stuff because they, they're not attached to Sony or AVEX or Universal, so that's really nice. And they also have really high quality shows. And then know how to promote them. Like Tiger and Bunny had excellent promotion, and so did Good Girl Simpson. No. Those studios. I would work with any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like everybody. Piero, I'd be kind of like, hmm. <laughs> I mean, other than that. <laughs> Sorry, Piero. You remember the book? <laughs> There are like two more things I want to ask you to to wrap it up, you know, since I know both of I mean, I know you you ha you obviously have to, you know, you, you're probably busy, you have probably shows to do and you know, I don't want to, you know, keep keep you, you know, on <laughs> on way too long. I've been I do want to say I appreciate your time though. But uh, um, no, I really appreciate you you interview and, and yeah, like I mean, after this I just back to songwriting. <laughs> 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 but but like with when when you first did the Naruto Shippuden ending thirty two, now this is a big question I've, I've wondered. Did you ever at any point get a chance to either meet like uh, Yasaharu uh, Takanachi, the guy who did he's the composer of like uh, Naruto Shippuden, like a lot of the like the soundtrack. I don't know if you know if you're familiar with him. I own all or, the soundtracks, but no, I didn't get to meet him. I was like, mm. God, they're so good. What about Kishimoto, Masashi Kishimoto? Did you meet him? No, I didn't. Uh, I'm gonna die. I did not meet Kishimoto because Kishimoto's a family man. He's at home with his family. Oh wow! I didn't. I did um, not know that. But I man, it makes sense. I guess when you think about like the way the story is written and you know like the family. And he's so nice to his little baby twin brother. Oh man, they're both mangaka, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you might know. Little baby twin brother from Oparts Hunter, which is yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Um, but he's a big family man. So after Naruto ended, he's like, you know what? I got enough money to live out the rest of my life and also like trust fund babies, like. I'm just going to spend time with my family because I love him. And I was like, oh, I love you! So I didn't get to meet him, but I'm sure it's because he's making his children incredibly happy, and that's okay with me. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <One. laughs> I, like, I know you had to have wanted to, but yeah, it makes sense. You know, I'm like, did he, have, did he at least give a comment on, like, how he felt about it? Did he say what he thought of the song, or? Unfortunately, no one comments on songs, so <laughs> that's sad. But um, the animators did. They did comment on the song. The animators really liked the song, and that's why they made such an awesome, awesome animation for the, the uh, ending, is because they, they generally listen to the song and then draw it, so they were inspired by the song. Yeah, I was going to say, take me through that process, because I've never known how that process goes as far as with, when it comes down to collaborating with the song and then putting that on the ending. So basically, we make the song months and months ahead of time. Uh, what happens first when you make the song is we're like... Uh, Naruto itself, because it ran so long, was an open call. Anybody could submit a song for sort of selection. And so hundreds of artists every season submit hundreds of songs. And this was our third time submitting to Naruto. Because I was like, Naruto! <laughs> like, well. and, um, and so finally they were like, yeah, I guess this one's fine. <laughs> I was like, yay. And so we then rewrote it to sort of match it even better, like where we are in the story and stuff like that. Although they used it for filler, so I was like, thanks for it. But, you know, Silhouette was the opening at the time, so, like, honestly, like, I think we had, like, the best little, like, baby corner of Silhouette and then my ending, like, mm -hmm. ego. But, but, anyhow, so after Yeah, I like, that, I like your ending, I mean, no offense to the other artists, but I like the ending more than, than the opening in this case. I mean, I felt like some of the... Silhouette, though. <laughs> you nice. But Silhouette's a legitimately good I feel like kind of endings are kind of underrated sometimes because I know a lot of people listen to, like, the opening. But sometimes the endings, to me, are better than the opening. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, they're all, like... A, the endings tend to be like um, more song songs uh, because the endings have more uh, freedom. Openings have to curtail to what's happening. Endings can be whatever. We did curtail it quite a bit. We were actually going for an opening, um, but uh, they had a different artist that they wanted to push for the next opening, sadly. Um, so they, <laughs> they picked my song for the ending instead of the opening, but we had been going for the opening. But, but yeah, like um, 
basically the opening has less freedom. The endings get to do more of what they want, and that's why endings tend to be more musically sound, I would say. But, oh. but that, that's a good observation. Endings do tend to be the better songs, but openings are cool too. <laughs> so I like them all. But anyway, but like we, we wrote the song, uh, and then we submitted it months ahead of time. Um, and so the, the animators were able to listen to the song, and they had about two months to animate it. And they would send us sort of key visuals uh, throughout being like, hey, we're thinking of this kind of thing. Um, and my label had to okay it. I don't really have any say, but like any, anything they sent me, I was like, yes, this is perfect. <laughs> like, whatever you want to do is perfect. It's great. Um, and then uh, basically the first time I saw the finished product was the first time it aired. So I was at home like this. Like, I got the day off. My management gave me the day off. They were like, you stay home and watch it. And I was like, yes, yes, sir. So I was watching it, and it scared the crap out of me because it started. And I was like, oh, it's me. And then, and then it the animation, and I was like, oh. like, it's so good. They did such a good, with like the. Yeah, like the, with the, like the song fitting with the fight scenes. And the fact that, you know, I, I like the whole yin and yang thing with Naruto and Sasuke, of course, and the emotion. <laughs> they together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What? Yeah, I I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I didn't even remember the episode um, that it fell on, but I mean, I knew it was towards the end because I knew that was right. Like, like I think a few endings from there. That's when they actually have the one where it's like, like right before Naruto. Actually, when Naruto and Sasuke fought the final valley, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Where it goes. Dun, 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 you know that one? I don't know. I'm not good at humming, but. <laughs> But, no, definitely, like, uh, they were going towards, I think Neji had, oh, spoiler alert, Neji had just had something bad happen. I think at this point, I mean, if anybody doesn't know, (laughs) I'll be like, I mean, the manga's done, the the, the anime is, Baruto's going on. Years, if you haven't watched it, your fault. Um, but anyway, so, so after that happened, uh, it, they went to filler to sort of bring everybody's spirits up because they're like, now that we've killed off your favorite Onichan, um, like, let's have some Chinese skin filler. And they used my ending song for that, but it's okay. I'm not, I'm not spicy about it. No, I'm not. Um, but I'm just happy you got used to it. So I'm like, yay, yeah, no, it's um, but, but you know, like, uh, basically, like, people sort of, the, the manga had just finished as well in Japan, so people were like going through their feelings. Um, and, and my song came on and they're like this is a really good ending song why here <laughs> so, but, but yeah but that's basically how the process works and, and I heard from the animators that they, they were really inspired from the song and I'm really glad that they were and, and basically the Naruto community it's really big because it's been going for like or it had been going for like over 15 years at that point um, so any, anybody that worked on Naruto was, was always like oh we're Naruto friends same with Flo like they're like oh we've got like Naruto like, we're Naruto buddies um, and, and Joe as well Joe and Flo also work together sometimes. So, like, I mean, we're all... I'd like to say that we're all really tight, but um, it's just a big community. And it's like, oh, I work, also worked on that, so we can sort of break the ice that way. Recently, I, <laughs> I was in uh, Minneapolis, and Tia was there. She did... You say it was uh, one of the Naruto, the original series endings, like the fourth yeah. ending. And, and I was able to talk to her about that. And, and she also did Yakshitatsu Japan, which is my personal jam. <laughs> it's about bread. It's a bread anime. Yeah, I'm, I've heard of that. But that's one that's been recommended to me um, probably so many times. I mean, I guess because I like Shokugeki no Soma. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. I'm very familiar. If it's Jump, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not as caught up as I should be right now. I've been really busy, but... Um, I it's dated for sure. Um, and I, I'm going to be kind of meat blunt here. I prefer the manga. Basically, the entire manga is a giant pun. So if you if you like funny things, I highly recommend Yaki Tatsu Japan. Um, the anime is short and sweet, and the music is good because Tia's in it. So there we go. And she's uh, she's actually in New York now, uh, and she she tours around America doing, I uh, believe, R and B and soul in uh, bilingually. So if, wow. if you're interested, a, a talented Japanese artist singing uh, soul and then also her own songs, I definitely. She's usually. I don't think I've heard of that. You know, to be honest with you, I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, I would like to, but yeah, I never heard that. She's she's really great. She's only been in Japan for or, uh, America for a couple of uh, years, I believe, uh, maybe two. And she she tours with a guy named Kohei who's been in in, in America for like a, seven years or so. And and I met them at the convention, and, and they're going all over the place. And, and they live in America full time, so uh, they're they're always around. Definitely take them out if you're in New York. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm. You know what's funny? I've never been in New York. I've been in Japan twice, but never been in New York. But. <laughs> 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 now here's my my final question. You know to wrap it all up. 
Um, what do you? What would you recommend to all of the ins- the? And this is probably the most generic thing, but I think it's important to inspire any of like anybody who's an as- aspiring like voice actor or inspiring singer, and you know they're wanting to get involved in being able to sing over in Japan. You know they want to be able to do just like you. They're like, I, you know, what, what would you recommend, or what do you what do you think that is the correct path? For them to do that. The first thing I would say is there is no correct path. Um, everybody has a different origin story. I sound like a Gundam. Everybody's got a different origin story. Um, <laughs> you know, Chris Hart, for instance, uh, ne- like never quite graduated university. He came over as a vending machine uh, operator, and uh, he met his wife, his lovely wife, and, and the kids and the adorable. Um, and and he came in through singing. Uh, at first rock, but then he switched to soul and R&B because he realized that's what people wanted from him. Um, in my case, I came over as a teacher, and I've been throwing myself at the anime wall really hard and hoping it breaks. <laughs> um, and then you've got people like Nicholas, and he came over uh, as a student, a language student, but before he finished university, he's also not a university kid. So there's so many different ways that you can come through Japan. I would say my way is slow but very stable because I always have a fallback with a four-year degree, you have a fallback. Um, Chris and Nick don't have as... Chris now has a fallback because he's been working in the industry for a while, but it's difficult if you don't have other things you can do to tide yourself over because it is really difficult to just get that visa from the get-go. And there is no right answer, but what I can recommend, learn Japanese. (laughs) Because if you don't speak Japanese, at least conversationally, you're going to have a really hard time. I do have... Oh my gosh. (laughs) That is, I can definitely believe that for sure. You know, oh my gosh. <laughs> Have you not to throw anybody in the bus, but uh, Himika did not initially speak Japanese when she came over, and I believe the first couple years were rocky because miscommunication. There, there isn't a lot of support for non-Japanese speakers. You have to be pretty fluent in order to understand the contracts and stuff like that. So, and it is a very different working environment, and by knowing the language, you'll also start to learn the culture because language and culture are very intrinsically entwined. Do people get surprised to, when you speak like like Japanese fluently at all? Like, you know, not to cut you off. I'm yes. Just, <laughs> <'cause> I'm, oh, yes. <laughs> On a daily basis, they're like, ah, are you happy? <laughs> I look at it with my eyes here. So, <laughs> <laughs> my eyes are very blue. So, um, a lot of people assume uh, there's actually like if you look on the internet, like there's like cool rumors about me that I grew up in Japan. That's cool. Um, <laughs> or like really Japanese and wearing contacts. Uh, nope. Um, so like basically, people refuse to believe I'm not Japanese. I, I do happen to be blessed with good hearing, so I'm able to. Uh, my accent is is good. Um, as you said, when you first listen to the song, you might not initially assume that I'm. Oh, I, not at all. Like I, <laughs> I had no clue until literally one day someone mentioned it. Like I'm just like reading the comment section. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like, wow, I was. <laughs> my name is not in English. We wrote it in katakana, and a lot of people just think it's a stage name because it doesn't sound like a real name. That's my real name. <laughs> I was dumb. Didn't think it was my real name. Um, but but yeah. So basically, like people just thought it was a fake name. And they didn't realize I was foreign until I dyed my hair blonde and I was like, guys, I'm foreign, guys, guys. Um, and if they can't initially understand, uh, the other thing I would say to, to hopefuls, uh, especially for the entertainment industry, is be initially understandable without having to explain yourself. I would say, especially early on in my career, that was a mistake I made. I was not somebody that you could understand the entire concept of by looking. If you look at any Japanese artist or any of the other foreign artists, just by like first impact, you're like, oh, I know exactly who you are. Like you are, a, you know, a rock singer. Like Lisa, you look at her and you're like, you're a cute rock idol anime thing. You know exactly by looking. If you look at Aoi Air, you're like, you're a cool, awesome anime lady. Like you know exactly by looking at her. Mizuki Nana as well. You're like, you're fluffy and look like a city. She's a city. Um, but with me, you're like, you could be half because I have black hair naturally. You're like, you could be half. You've got a really shiny, weird name though. <laughs> you do, your, your Japanese is really good. Huh. So I, they basically would sit there and think about what I was for a while without listening. And I think being difficult to understand from far away or even by paying attention. Like you had to Wikipedia me to know who I was because you'd be like, did I get it? And then you look at it, oh, she's actually foreign. She's not just putting in contacts or whatever. Because a lot of Japanese have talent put in contacts to look more foreign. And so they just would. Or sometimes not just understand. the whole big eye thing. I know sometimes people do with like the what's it the uh, pikura or. Uh, 
uh, it's, it's, it's great. But, but yeah, it was difficult to initially understand. And so sort of halfway through my career, I noticed that that was holding me back. It's not like I want to sell out or anything like that. Like I don't want to be like a stereotype. I want to break stereotypes. That's why I'm here. But in Japan, because it's so homogenous, to be initially understood, it helps to have that visual impact. So currently I'm doing sort of funny hair colors or blonde. And then, otherwise, I'm keeping it fairly natural. Um, like, I dress in really loud things so that people be all like, oh, that's definitely somebody who's entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> put on, put on uh, the uh, cowboy hat, and they're like, oh, that's an American right there. I'm not going to go that far. No, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> I want Japan to know that there are shades of foreign. I want them to know there's all kinds of foreigners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at the same time, I don't want them to mull over my image and not listen to what I'm doing or saying or singing um, and I think early on in my career we made a mistake by trying to basically not mention it because I don't sound foreign when I sing so I think my, my management was kind of like well I guess we can try and go for, for half but then I'm not so when people would listen to my backstory they're like wait 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 why aren't you saying this up front like why aren't you being more loud about this and even with Naruto we weren't loud about the fact that I was the first solo foreign artist uh, to, to do a Naruto song. Like, we weren't loud about it, so nobody knew. Everybody was like, cool, it's another Naruto song. But we, we weren't like, hey, this person came all the way from America to sing anime songs. You should maybe listen. Um, and I think that when was you, a mistake. When you say that, too, I don't think there was anybody else that I can think of that did Naruto that was foreign. I mean, I mean unless, you, unless you're no, going to count... I was going to say unless you count Joe, but... Unless you count Joe, no. I mean, I, I, like, there's other anime... Like, there's a K-pop band, maybe? Maybe? <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure about that. <laughs> they did. I know when did Blue Exorcist in five, two p.m. I think did uh, uh, Blue Exorcist. But as far as I know, another to like there might have been somebody Kermit the K or somebody. But I was the first female solo foreign artist for sure. Um, and and we did not make a big deal about it. Uh, and that was a mistake I think uh, early on we made a, a lot of image mistakes and and now sort of as of well, let's make a big deal about it now I'm like <laughs> I'm making a big deal about it. <laughs> I'm like but and I, that's something I would recommend to people that are trying to get into the industry is I know it feels like sometimes like you, you don't want to change yourself you want to be the best you that you can be but sometimes um, other people like consumers want something easy to digest first and then slowly work your way back um, you, you need to get people interested you need to be sort of a honey trap and get them addicted and then from there sort of break their perceptions and concepts and break their, their I what what's common sense to them you, you sort of need to ease them out of it like not all foreigners are blonde and blue-eyed um, <laughs> says the person that died they were blonde <laughs> not all you know like, for instance, like, not all, like, K-pop bands go back to Korea. Some of them stay. Like, some, like, K stay in Japan long-term and, and make them, the, their lives all about Japan. So it, it's all about sort of exposure, but you need to get them interested first. And if you're sort of going at it full force, like, I'm going to break your stereotypes. In the beginning, they sometimes have an issue with that. But definitely language first, because without language, you can't get any of this across. And then I would say work on your package that image is, is part of the package and it's not just about being good at singing unfortunately i really wish it was like, <laughs> things would be much easier in my life it's not just about, it's about knowing how to market good. yourself exactly it's knowing how to market yourself and also knowing that you are a product that sounds terrible um but knowing that i mean it is what it is i mean technically i mean <laughs> It's an industry, and it, the industry doesn't work for you. You work for the industry, and if you have a message, and like for instance, like my my sort of message is that I want to inspire not only foreigners coming to Japan because definitely we need more. Please come, but also you know Japanese people maybe that want to work in Hollywood. Like there was a girl in, in Heroes, the, the the reboot recently, and she she went from Japan to, to Hollywood at 19. I want to inspire that kind of person, and I want to inspire more conversation and more, like, having more education and exposure. And if I can do that through, like, silly, adorable anime, that's great. Um, but the best way to do that is to be somebody open and open to changing, sort of, and, and being flexible with your message and image. And at first in my career, I, I wanted to keep my hair its natural color because I was like, no, foreigners can also have black hair. But now I realize that it didn't matter because everybody asks, is that your natural hair color? And then I can say, no, it's black. And then they're like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> and 
they learned. If they thought I dyed my hair and they just wouldn't ask, and now that I'm blonde, they'd be like, that's such a pretty blonde. Is that natural? And I'm like, no. And they're like, mm, <laughs> I can get color blonde. And I'm like, yes, you can. Let's all go blonde. So, like, and, and now I've got purple going on. But but exactly, like you, you just need to sort of find new ways of, of conveying that message and not being so me, me, me. But it's more about who's listening rather than who's like presenting the information. And it, it's not about how good you are at singing because no one cares. It's about the message that you're trying to get across. And that's that's a hard lesson. To, it's like a hard pill to swallow, especially at first. Because you're like, what? But I spent all this time getting good at singing. It doesn't work. <laughs> And also being open to doing new things. Like right now with the Go and the radio and stuff like that, it's not something I had imagined myself doing, but it's cool. I like it. It's fun. I get to learn lots of stuff and I meet a lot of people, and those people will then listen to my songs. And they would not have ever come across them before because they're like You get to live the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Bring in. More anime. Yay. <laughs> I play Go. Go people listen to it. Yay. <laughs> Man, well... Like, um, you know, I do want to go ahead and try to close this out now. I um, I do appreciate you coming on today. There's so much more I do want to ask you, but I feel like I could just keep talking and talking, and you know, and we, we both would just keep talking, and it would and it would be so long that anybody who decides to watch this like later it might. Be like, be. We can have a part two sometime. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, well, maybe like the viewers could like ask questions, and then we could do like a part two sometime. So that I know what they want to know, because I don't know what they want to know. So it's just been like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, you know, if, if you ever have another like date that we can set up or whatever, you know, we can definitely do that. Um, you know, just whenever you're. Even if you just have free time, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll we'll figure that out if you know if you know if we decide to do that. But like, um, I definitely you know um, you know appreciate you coming on the day. There is something that I do want to mention to everybody before we close it out. Then you know. Um, you know, we'll go ahead and say our words or whatever. Um, you should be seeing something pop up on your screen right now. This is actually uh, Densetsu Mang Mangaka. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this, they were one of our previous guests that came on the show, um, I would say, maybe um, actually a few episodes ago. So, actually, you, saw, you should have saw them at the end of last year. They're Right now, they're running a campaign to get their own anime started. And they actually have a couple voice actors that are going to be on this project. So one of the voice actors they have actually is the, um, the voice actor that does the voice of Chi-Chi. It's uh, Cynthia Kranz. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so she's going to be working on this project with them. They're trying to raise money for it. I'm going to be posting a link after this stream so that everybody can go ahead and uh, take a look at and, and definitely support them. They're, you know, they're a good team, Unlikely Heroes. You definitely want to support them. They're working really hard at uh, you know, pushing out this content. They're always pushing out chapters of their manga. And I think the story is very rich. So um, you know, I think this is a project that you definitely would want to invest in and you'd want to see happen. I mean, who doesn't want to see an American-made like anime? So. Oh. <laughs> now, Diana, um, was there any like other closing words that you'd like to say before we close this out? Well, first, I'd like to thank everyone for, for listening. Um, and uh, sorry if I'm like really chatty. Um, but oh, no. If you got any questions or anything, um, send them either to here or to me. Um, I'm not always the best at answering, but I will try to be hard. Um, and and look out for, for new projects. I've got basically a bajillion and a half announcements uh, this month and next month. And I know a lot of people have been like, it's been forever since the song. So, you know, we've got lots of songs at once. And I hope you listen to them. And I hope you enjoy the games and, and whatever else I've got coming out. Hopefully lots and lots and lots to, to say, but I can't get too specific to them. Okay. Well, thank you so much for um, coming on the day, and I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your day. Um, well, it's nighttime here, so I mean, I guess everybody's probably either sleep or... Yeah. <laughs> but it's early in Japan, so if there's any Japanese viewers uh, watching, I'm trying to think of the Japanese word I'd want to say. I mean, I guess arigato gozaimasu for watching, or arigato gozaimashita. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, and then... um. Also, the website, if you guys have went on Shining Otaku recently, it has been having a little bit of problems lately with reading manga on there, so uh, bear with us on that. Um, it should be fixed, I would say, tomorrow, so you can expect to see like new chapters of Exidio, Gods of Life, and uh, Striker and Slayer coming out soon. So anyway, have a good day, guys, and uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>